the first order of the day at Coho. It's a new day on campus. I'm currently walking over to the lab at Chem H. Get inside, get gloved up, and yeah, let's get to work. We're all friends from back in our freshman dorm. We all kind of realized we have some shared interests in like biology, chemistry, specifically for medical applications. Hello everyone, it's Charlotte. We just got into the lab. No, I clicked record now. Oh, and then you stopped it? Yeah. Okay, take again. Charlotte actually told us about this program at the ChemH Institute at Stanford called the Undergrad Entrepreneurship Program. So we thought, hey, why don't we form a team and try applying to this program? So over here are Martine and Andrew working. And we went through that program, a very intensive 10 plus week process, and we were very fortunate to win some funding from that program for our research project, which is what we've been pursuing ever since. Wow, this camera's really good. This looks like professional thermal scientific advertisement footage. <laughs> no, but I'm adding another drop. drop. No, stop adding tiny drops that are not doing anything. That's changing the volume. Yeah. Don't vortex it. Don't vortex it. <laughs> Martin, control him. You're adding small little air bubbles. Sonic, that's literally what Sonic Katie does. We took a few different approaches to this. It wasn't only what we're passionate about and what our research is, we were also looking at what a group of three undergraduates could accomplish and make a meaningful impact in the world with just a small amount of funding to hopefully go get more in the future. It all started with a couple articles we read around two years ago, tracking the rise of these fungal infection incidences around the world. There are many different strains of fungi, and all of them are resistant to different types of drugs. There's kind of this lack of availability when it comes to antifungals, especially when you're trying to treat such a diverse class of diseases that arise from a multitude of organisms. I think that the more diversity you can have, the more likely it is that you'll see better patient outcomes. And so we're really trying to fill that need. We're looking mostly to get through the end of a high throughput screen. That requires two main things. First, it requires purified protein that we're going to develop an inhibitor against. And second, we need a way to measure how well the inhibitors work and how much output there is from this actual protein. So we've kind of been working on these two projects in tandem. I don't think we'd still be here if we weren't as close of friends as we are. Learning how to effectively manage our own research project, obviously with a lot of help and support, but being the point people who are at the end of the day in charge of making the decisions. Is there a reason you're holding two paddles at once? So I'm testing them both out. I see. Yeah. Being on your own and having to start from ground zero, building everything up, having to learn how every single thing works along the way, that really necessitates having to really know the details very well. All three of us want to go get further degrees in academia. I think this experience especially has given us a new insight into what it looks like to really run your own project. We all have say in everything we do, so we all get to see the entire scope of the project from idea to hopefully the creation of an antifungal therapeutic. We just got out of the lab. Say hi, Martin. Hello, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> We're walking out of Chem H right now, and here's a little night view of the courtyard. In my opinion, one of the coolest buildings on campus. Also, we got good results. I don't know if the people watching this will care, but we <laughs> yeah. got good results. 